Andromache was a fierce woman, as her name suggested. She grew up in Cilician Thebe, ruled by her father Aetian. Andromache was fortunate enough to fall in love with Hector, a brave and skillful Trojan warrior. They were married, and Andromache bore him a son named Astyanax. However, during the Trojan War, Hector was killed in battle, leaving Andromache and Astyanax alone. After the war, the Greeks planned to kill Astyanax, fearing he may grow up to seek revenge for his father's death. Talthybius, a Greek herald, informed Andromache of their plan to throw the young boy from the city walls. She was devastated by the news but powerless to stop them. Astyanax was killed, and Andromache was taken as a concubine by Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles. She bore him several children, but her heart still belonged to Hector. Later, Andromache married Helenus, Hector's brother, and became the queen of Epirus. She remained faithful to Hector and continued to make offerings at his cenotaph, even in Epirus. Andromache's virtuous character and loyalty to her late husband made her famous. She represented the suffering of Trojan women during the war and became a symbol of hope for them. In her old age, Andromache went to live with her youngest son Pergamus in Pergamum, where she died. Her legacy and memory were treasured by the Trojan women and lived on after her death. Andromache, a tragic figure in Greek mythology, had a rough start in life. She was born in Cilician Thebe, but her family suffered terribly when the city was sacked by Achilles. Her father and seven brothers were killed, and shortly after, her mother died of illness. With no family left besides Priam's household, Andromache was left with nothing but their support. However, Andromache soon found love in Hector, who took her from her father's home with countless wedding gifts, and together they embodied the Greek ideal of a happy marriage. They even had a son named Scamandrius, who was affectionately called Astyanax by the people of Troy and Homer. Andromache finally believed she had found happiness and peace in her life. But tragedy struck when the Greeks defeated Troy. Andromache's world crumbled around her as her son was killed and she was left alone and unnamed in Iliad 22, referred to only as the wife of Hector. The Greeks treated the Trojan women as spoils of war, permanently separating them from each other and from the ruins of their former lives. Andromache experienced firsthand the fate of conquered women in ancient warfare. She lost her family and became a displaced woman, forced to live outside familiar and safe societal boundaries. Despite all her loss and tragedy, Andromache remained a strong and brave woman. She refused to become a victim of her circumstances and instead tried to keep her husband's memory alive by teaching their son about his father's bravery and courage. Andromache's story is a heartbreaking reminder that war and violence can have devastating consequences, especially for innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. Andromache was heartbroken when her young son Astyanax was murdered on the suggestion of Odysseus, who feared the boy would avenge his father Hector's death. Tragically, Andromache became a concubine to Neoptolemus, son of Achilles. She was taken to Thyia where Achilles' parents, Thetis, and Peleus, lived. There, she was said to have three children, Molossus, Pylus, and Pergamus, according to Pausanias. However, Euripides claims that Molossus was her only son. But Andromache's troubles continued. Hermione, Neoptolemus's wife, tried to kill her as she believed Andromache to be cursed with infertility. Later, Andromache married her ex-brother-in-law Helenus and moved to the land of the Molossians. She and her son Molossus started an unbroken succession of kings who would live happy lives, according to Thetis. Aeneas visited Andromache, and while he was there, he received a prophecy from Helenus. Andromache also gave him robes and a Phrygian cloak for his son, Ascanius, the only reminder of her son Astyanax. According to Pausanias, Andromache's son, Pergamus, had a shrine in the city that still exists. Throughout all her struggles and heartbreaks, Andromache remained a brave and resilient Trojan princess. Andromache was devastated when she heard the news of her husband's death. She could not believe that Hector, 
her beloved husband and protector of Troy, was gone forever. She rushed to the battlefield to find his lifeless body lying on the ground. She held his hand and wept uncontrollably, her heart broken with grief. As per tradition, Andromache began lamenting, a ritual to mourn and pay tribute to the departed soul. She tore off her headdress along with other Trojan women and started wailing for her husband. She remembered their happy times together, the moments of laughter and love they shared, and the promises they made to each other. She mourned for her home, the beautiful city of Troy, now burned to ashes, and for her people, who were enslaved by the Greeks. Andromache's raw emotions were evident in her lamentation, and she could not control the pain that consumed her soul. Her world collapsed with her husband's death, and she knew that life would never be the same again. She was alone, with no one to turn to, and no home to call her own. Days passed, and the formal stage of mourning began. Hector's body was returned to Troy, and the entire city mourned for him. However, Andromache's grief was still fresh, and she could not bear to see her husband's lifeless body. Instead, she retreated to a secluded place and sang a poignant tribute to her love. Her song was a testament to the beautiful memories she shared with Hector and the pain of losing him forever. Andromache's story is a reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of love and companionship. Her heart-wrenching discovery of her husband's death and her subsequent grief resonated with people for centuries, making her one of the most iconic figures in Greek mythology. Do you want to explore more Greek mythology stories? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.